and that Pidcock just continuing to talk to everybody, make sure that they're all committed. And Matt, there's no reason why they shouldn't all be committed here because there's something the game for everybody, isn't there? Totally, totally. Uh, all the riders here have actually got GC ambition, including Ganna, and he's helping Pidcock a little bit more as well. It might be a little bit too hard for Ganna tomorrow, but we know he's climbing well. Everybody here has got uh, something to aim for putting the rest of the peloton under a lot of pressure. But that little, little as they kicked out of that corner, did you see the effort that Pidcock had to put in just to get back onto the wheel after you've done your turn? You're going ever so slightly slower than riders in front. You then have that spike in power as you accelerate onto the wheel. These guys are moving so, so quickly, absolutely on the rivet, as we call it. Great bike racing, it really is. 15 seconds now. And if this does come back together, what's going to be left for the likes of Sudal Quickstep and Bora Hanskra? Once more behind, by the way, the hands go up from Kwiatkowski and the Ineos Grenadiers. They're unhappy that the television motorbike is coming here to take images. And you can sort of understand why. That's why it's moved ever so slightly to the right here yeah. to take it from a different angle. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's always a bit controversial, isn't it? But also there's a TV motorbike in front for the other riders too, but that's better. Moving over to the left-hand side, we can still get some great images, can't we? But it doesn't quite interfere with the racing. And that's been a common theme. It's always a common theme, isn't it? Especially when there's, the stakes are high. As we're heading back to Rui Costa, it looks so good. Great to see this rider after some years. Not exactly in the wilderness, but kind of faded into semi-obscurity in the peloton. And now, great to see him back to his very best. I mentioned this in Mallorca and in Valencia the other week. I was lucky enough to be commentating on, on his start to the season. He joined Anton Marché and vocally said that he wanted to be like Alexander Kristoff. He, he used him as an example, said, look, I want to kick-start my career again and move in the same direction my former teammate did, because I saw him go there, and he was born again, was Alexander Kristoff, when he left UAE and went there. It didn't take long, did it? Because on the first day he won already in Calvia and Palmanova. Then he won in Valencia, stage and GC. And here he is right up there in the general classification after two and a half days, almost three days of racing here. He's second on GC as it stands with the bonus seconds added and looking like he could do seriously something at one of his big home races. Yep, he's looking very, very good, isn't he? Looking sharp, that sprint as well, so climbing well. And just rolled Tom Pickock for second place in that sprint. So clearly, and just by his expression, the way he's positioned in the bunts all the time, he looks hungry, looks keen, he's focused, isn't he? You can clearly see that as Tiller, the Norwegian champion, slowly doing his part to drag this group back now. 13 seconds, Rob, eight kilometers to go. Still that tailwind all the way pretty much to the line. We've got that series of little roundabouts with two kilometers to go. So it's a relatively complex last 1,500 meters. And then that final right-hander, that little kicker with 400 to go. You see, in the size of this group, Matt, it's certainly not as full as it was two or three kilometres back. They are losing bodies because this is so hard just to stay in the bunch. Yeah, it really is. I'm sure a couple of riders were shot out the back, but they're moving really quickly. But luckily, on these long open roads, they have them in their sights, don't they? But uh, 15 seconds at this speed, it's a big gap, isn't it? It's a lot of tarmac. And they are closing, but it's only slowly. But there's still enough time for them to bring this back. But the cohesion, if one or two riders now start to sit on in this group, I think, it, I think it'll be the end for them. But from what we've seen so far, every single rider is riding well. This is a really smart move as well, to spot that, to sense it, to seize the opportunity. It is a real textbook opportunity. We see these hotspot sprints. We've seen splits happen in the past like this, although it doesn't happen very often. With that, uh, with that tailwind too, and the gap that opened up, why not capitalise on it? And um, they might just pull this off. It's really hanging in the balance. Very exciting final, this one, Rob. Loving it. I'd be really interested to see whose idea it was or whether it was a decision made on the fly. Of course, Ganna being there for Pidcock. I mean, they would have had to wait and see that a gap opened up before they could go for it. There's no point totally. just pulling the whole peloton. However, it was that little nod and word in the ear of Magnus Court from Tobias Foss that really kick-started things. Like, OK, Ganna's still going here. Let's follow him. Let's now, Pidcock, Pidcock starts to sit on the back. There we yeah. go. I mean, when you... Again, we know Pidcock is one of the finest riders in the world, but... He's starting to suffer here. Everybody's suffering here. When you look at the... Tom Pickett's quite a light rider, ridiculously high power to weight, but on a flat bit of road with these sorts of engines, there's, it's all about absolute power. So the likes of Foss and Ganna, they are moving very quickly. So a couple of little moves missed there uh, by Pickett, but they've still got 16 seconds with 6K to go.
The French TGV, the high-speed train on the right-hand side. Cavagna, his best young rider for the moment, Frederik Vondel. Danish rider for Bora Hanskua. Kesper Pedersen, another Danish rider. Before the former national Danish champion is about to come to the front in Kesper Askren. After that, it's the current Norwegian champion, Rasmus Tiller. He's been around for quite a while. He's a really strong rider and solid finisher. Today, he's been used in a different role. He's trying to set things up for Alexander Kristoff or Søren Varenskjold to have a go towards the end. Niels Pollitt has been riding hard, but the group in front hard pulling seconds away again. Yeah, it's 18 it, now, and, and the difference and the distance on the screen is growing as well. There's a... There's less riders on the front reeling now. There's about six or seven reeling. So we've got six in front and, well, and about six reeling at the back. And some of the turns that I've noticed from the riders that have been put on the front are shorter. Frederick Vandal went on the front. He only managed about five or six seconds on the front. It's very, very hard. A lot of teams now moving up. I, I did see Cajaral moving up on the outside. So all it might take, but they, they can't afford to leave it too much longer. We've only got about five minutes of racing because we're moving at the best part of 60 k's an hour here, Rob. So so, um, yeah, five minutes to close, although it's, I don't think it's quite 10 seconds. I think it's more about 15 or 20, but this is going to be a thriller. I don't want to call it just yet. Four kilometres the line now as we have a look at that last kilometre on the left-hand side here. Roundabout City, and then that right turn with 400 metres to go up to the finale. This is it. And it's a tight right turn. Not going to bother the group in the front so much, but there it is. And we go uphill and the finish line at the top. It's not a huge percentage drag, but they will feel it in the legs, certainly after that right turn at the bottom that will kill quite a little bit of speed. It's always a difficult sprint, this one. In the past, we've had winners, the likes of Bennett, Greipel, Grunewege, Ball and Kittel. We might have another sort of sprinty name winning, this time in a different way, because at the front, the GC guys, faster riders, have broken away, have gone for it after the intermediate sprint behind if there is going to be a bunch sprint set up which is looking increasingly unlikely now in the final three kilometers they really are going to have to work and yep. is there anything going to be left well it's a pedersen on the front casper pedersen three kilometers to go just under now for the group in front look at the pace here look at magnus court getting as low frontally as he can tuck that classic style elbows arms at 90 degrees forcing the pace on the front with the world tt champion device forcing his slipstream 12 seconds 2.6 k's to go this is going to be thrillingly tight here rob Two and a half kilometers to the conclusion of the stage. They're getting closer from behind. Some big turns being done, but a couple of riders are done for the day. You can see they peel off left and right from the bunch now as they start to get closer to the bunch. And it is 10 seconds of a gap. The other side of the roundabout continues to go uphill. We're in town now, in Tavida itself, and we are ready for the finale to what's been a fantastic end to this stage. In the last 30 kilometers, things kicked off big style beautiful beautiful bike racing and things you could not really have forecast at all now this is absolutely fascinating i've just seen nils pollitt pull a huge turn on the front 1900 meters to go it's philip ogana hits the front this is the sort of power that you need you need somebody now to sacrifice themselves remember in your grenadiers have got two riders in that front group everybody else is on their own so pidcock has ghana the ghana if they're going to need if they're going to stay away here as alpes and de Koenig get on the front they need to sacrifice somebody Interesting that Groupama FDG had a rider on the front there. You imagine that's a spoiling tactic because Madouas is at the front. Or do they think that it could be one for Penwet? Let's see. On the right-hand side, they're looking to try and keep up there. That's Jake Stewart on the right-hand side. And now we have UA Emirates because Matteo Trentin is getting interested with just over a kilometre to go. Look behind now from the yellow jersey, Magnus Court. They've got to keep going. They've got to keep riding. It's a shorter distance than the one that you can see on your screen because they're now into the final kilometre. What a stage we have had here. And we're in for a terrific finale now in Tavida. On the right, it's getting frantic as DSM tried to get Casper for 
Van Uden up there as well. There's Jakobsen with no support left hardly, just trying to follow, just trying to be in there. We're into that final kilometre now, and it's still Tom Pidcock who commits once more. There's Hurri Costa, Filippo Ganna. In the yellow, you have Foss. Behind him, there's Maduas and the yellow jersey, the race leader, Magnus Court, who won the stage yesterday. It's breathtaking, breathless stuff, and we've been racing for five hours and four minutes, but there has been an explosion of action inside the final 30 kilometres. Here we go, and it is Ganna who makes that turn. Madwas is there. They could be on them behind. It could be heartbreak oh. for this big group of riders, and I think they've decided now. They've realised they will be caught, and with just 450 metres to the line, they have been caught. But Court is there, and can he go? He's going to launch his sprint to try and get something, to try and take advantage of any chaos behind. It's the race leader, it's Magnus Court trying to hold them off all on his own. Ganna tries to get involved as well. Ganna's there on the left-hand side. Magnus Court's still got a gap, though, and look at Magnus Court go! Magnus Court is on another level, and still going, still going. They'll try, they'll try, but they cannot. And Magnus Court with one of the victories of his career. Matt Stevens alongside me is applauding. All bow down. I said it yesterday. I will say it today again. We are all in the court of King Magnus. That is one of the most sensational things we have seen in bike racing for quite the long while. That was, that was utterly incredible. I thought Haller had brought them all back together. They were in contact, and then coming out of that corner, 450, 400 metres to go, he took it up with a crosswind from the side uh, and just, just rode them off his wheel, rode Ganna, Tobias Foss, off his wheel after riding, you know, doing a lot of work in the group already. And utterly, I'm speechless, Rob, an utterly incredible finish to a sensational stage. That is bike racing at its very best. All smiles, and you would be, wouldn't you? This man is on fire. <laughs> I'm EF still Education mate. Easy Post. <laughs> they have delivered, haven't they, at the start of this season? None of them can yeah. believe it. They better believe in him because he's taken Just... the stage win for the second day running. He has taken 10 more bonus seconds added to the six he had at the intermediate. Magnus Court, as well as a two-time stage winner. Doesn't matter, Matt, whether you're in the mountains or on the flats. He goes. He takes the lead. And he has added today 16 seconds, by nature of the bonuses, to his victory. And we've got to have a look here because there might actually be a gap as well. Oh, it's incredible. Did you see that? He, he basically knew his only one way he was going to win this one, that was to take it up into that corner. Carried a bit more pace than Foss. And that first stamp on the pedals, I mean, the, the way he moved clear, Ganna held on incredibly for second place. A great ride by Filippo Ganna. But he might have had a big gap here. Well, well, he did have a big gap, but that was so, so impressive. It really was. Everybody else behind was utterly spent. Superb stuff. It really was. What an astonishing ride. But again, smart as well. There was no hesitation. He thought, I can't wait now. Foss backed off. He took it into the corner and just went all in. Absolutely 100% belief. That's what he had in himself there. Um, and just that turn of speed that he's got at the moment, it's, it's quite remarkable. Incredible stuff. Matt Stevens, I really wasn't ready for that on a Friday afternoon. No. <laughs> An exhibition and a day of bike racing we will not forget for a very, very long time. Put the crown on him, because he's here. The king of the moment. Oh, my word. That was a great day's bike racing, wasn't it? Really, really uh, riveting stuff. Takes the hotspot sprint and takes the stage. Magnus Court, Filippo Ganna, Jordi Meus, then Paul Penwet and Valentin Madouas. That's Oliveira, Costa, Foss, Turns, Aski. What a mix.